I am Lizzie with Long Distance Gamers. We are a group of friends who play games remotely due to us living in different states. Today I will be talking about Concordia. What do I think about it? And more importantly, how do we play it remotely? Before we get started, there are two different sides. The side running the game, also known as the runner side, they for sure have a copy and play the game mostly like normal. The remote side may or may not have a copy. We will be going over how the remote side sets up and how the remote side responds to the game. This is Concordia set up for remote play. As you can see, this looks very similar to in-person play. The running side has determined which one of these resources go to which city in the normal setup manner, and then they vocalize how they come out. So for instance, Ishkadi is the wheat. They will also set out these cards, and then these resources are based, of course, on the majority that the running side has provided. For the best gameplay experience, I do go ahead and send the sides without a copy a picture of the board, as well as all of their cards. I do have them in a grid so that they can easily make out the name, all the words, as well as the god that gives them the victory points at the end. And I will also send them a front and back of this card, as well as if I am the only side with a copy, I will go ahead and have this card up on the screen so that the remote side can easily reference this without having to jump back and forth between a picture on their phone and the board. Also, if I am the only side with a copy or if there's a side without a copy, I will go ahead and have this portion of the board directly towards the camera so that it is easier to see this while this information is still visible. During a player's turn, the runner side will go ahead and hold their cards up to the camera and they will choose what they want to play. Normally what our group does is the remote side already knows what card they want to play because they have all of these written down and then they just make tallies or notes to denote that they have already played it for that cycle so that way they know what is left in their hands. So for instance, if they want to play the Senator card, which is this card right here, which the runner side won't know because they won't be looking at the cards, but the remote side goes that they want to play this card. So both sides just agree on which side is one. So for instance, this is one. So you would count one, two, three, four. And the remote side will say, I want to play my number four card. The runner side will pull it out, hold it up to the camera. The remote side will go ahead and say, yes, that's the card. And then the remote side will go ahead and dictate what they want. So for instance, Brixie wants these two cards. So he has to pay a wine and a tool, and then a random resource, so he will go ahead and pay a wheat. These cards do get added to his hand. He would just write down what the cards are, as he normally does, and then the runner side would just apply them anywhere, as long as it's somewhat easy to tell what the names are. These will slide down, and the side running the game will dictate which these two are. So they will go ahead and say, the first one will go ahead and be a vin production for wine. The second one would be a mason, for instance. Look through the two first. Once the twos are complete, then you will go through the threes. And these are just in separate stacks so that it's easier to find the one card that you need. Remote side is wanting to play the prefect card, which that is getting resources or coins from here. Generally, our group will say what they are going for. So for instance, Brooks really wants this cloth. So as the running side, you would say, okay, well, these four are the cloth ones. So they're here, 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 and here. Based on that information, they would determine which section they want to do. Once there are coins here, for instance, if this was, if these were already flipped, we have five coins available, as that can be a little bit difficult for the remote side to see, we go ahead and use a dry erase token, and we write down the number that it is. So we have five coins available, so we write down a five. Sometimes this is still a little bit difficult to see, so we will go ahead and move it in an area that doesn't affect gameplay, but is a little bit more visible. Someone is playing the architect card, and that will be movement to specify how you are moving. You just specify first if you are moving your ship or your person, and which person. With all of us starting in Rome, it's pretty easy to tell which one. However, if this person was over here, and Brixby had another person over here, he would say that he is moving the person in Gallia, so that way you can know to look over here pretty easily. And then he can move three. Now that there are three people here. So he could say, okay, I'm going to move my boat 
a space towards Carthaga, so it ends between Rome and Carthaga. And then I will go ahead and move my person in Galilea two spaces towards Cloth and Hispania. So I will end, so he would go one and two and end between, I cannot pronounce these names. So then he would just say, yes, that is correct. If he wants to build this cloth building, for instance, that would require a brick, a cloth, and five money. So he'd go ahead and pay those. And then we would place one of his buildings there. Sometimes it is easier if you put them on their sides to be able to see a little bit more of that green color. It depends on your angle of the camera. Whatever is more visible for the remote side is what you would want to go with. If all sides of your game group does have this game, then I wouldn't even worry about putting their cards in these card holders. I would just put them in a stack at the beginning of the game. And then when they acquire the market cards, I would just stick them on top of theirs. They would vocalize what card they are playing, but they keep track of everything on their side. And these are just kept for scoring at the end of the game as we all score each other's together. You just keep playing the game. You'll lay down the cards, vocalizing what you want to do. If you play the market, you would specify if you're playing your basic or your starter one or the upgraded one if you have both in your hand. And then you would do what it applies. You would get the coins, trade in your goods, and then just generally update everybody on what you have at the end. If everybody does have a copy, I do keep track of their goods and coins as it is open information and it does help me decide what I might want to go for, especially towards the end of the game. And then once the end of the game is triggered, you count up your scores, you see who won. So that is how you play Concordia remotely. As you can see with a few minor tweaks, this game is one that can be a blast to play with your game group. With or without all sides having a copy, this game is fantastic and I highly recommend you pulling this out and giving it a try. This is one that I had originally gotten and our group played it with me only having a copy and then being the remote side and it worked out very well. They actually loved it so much that they got their own copy so that not only could they play it if I'm not around, they could also enjoy a more immersive experience as playing with a physical game does allow you to see these names a little bit clearer than a picture on your phone and you're not trying to juggle pictures on your phone and the camera screen, which does help some. However, this is a very enjoyable experience with one copy or multiple copies. But hey, have fun and be you. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to hear from you.